All right. Partial fractions. All right. So, for example, what you're dealing with here is you've got um, the integral of, say, Something like that, okay. And what you're uh, I'm gonna let's make make it ten, okay. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to obviously integrate that, right? Well, the problem is is that you don't have a u sub. Um, you know, it's uh, this isn't a very nice problem to try and do, but what you what we want to do is we want to try and break this thing up into two integrals. That's the hope, okay? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what the heck A and B are, all right? So this is the way we do it. We assume that they exist, the A and the B. We don't really know what they are, but we're like, eh, whatever. Let's see if it's there. We'll try. So what we do is we say 10 all over x plus 2 x minus 4 is equal to some a. This is the assumption. And now what we do is we simplify this and try and see what happens. So at the very least now, we have the same denominator. And since we have the same denominator, we can go ahead and knock them out. Now we've got And now let's, you know, look at what we've got here. So, I mean, well, first of all, we've got a constant over here. And over here, you know, we said that A and B were constants to begin with, right? So this 4A, negative 4A, and this 2B, those are just constant. And this AX and this BX, well, they're not, they're variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor out my GCD there and I'm going to put this over here. So I've got a, I've got a uh, constant and I've got a variable or linear section. Okay. But over here, I've got a constant. And the deal is, is that, you know, variables can't become constants <laughs> unless we plug things in for them. So the deal is, is that basically I've got, think about it this way, I've got an x to the zeroth here, right? And I've got an x to the first here, right? Well, this is an x to the zeroth, yeah? So what's the deal? The deal is, is that this 10 has to be equal to this 2b minus 4a. And I've got no x to the firsts. So that means that zero has to be equal to a plus b. So we do what is called equating coefficients. Let's go back up here for a second. We started off with one equation with two unknowns. And now by equating coefficients, we're gonna break up this one equation into two. We know that zero is equal to a plus b 
and we know that 10 is equal to 2b minus 4a. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. And now we can begin to solve it. So I'm just going to put 5 is equal to b minus 2a. Okay. And now um, I'm just going to say 5 plus 2a is equal to b. b is equal to negative a. 5 plus 2a is equal to negative a. And now a is equal to negative 5 thirds. And since B is equal to negative A, that tells me that B is equal to positive 5 thirds. So what we did was we started with one equation with two unknowns. We split it up into two different equations and solve them. Now let's plug them back in and see if we're out of our minds. So according to what we found, A was equal to negative 5 thirds and B was equal to positive 5 thirds. So I'm just going to take those, plug them in for A and B and see what happens. Okay, and now when I go ahead and multiply or get my common denominators, I get negative 5x minus 4 plus 5x plus 2, 3x plus 2x minus 4, negative 5x plus 20 plus 5x plus 10. Plus two minus four positive twenty. Am I missing a nine minus sign? What did I do? I should just be getting a ten, not a thirty. Oh no, wait, I do. Good, that's right. I haven't made a mistake. Sometimes you gotta. This is why you always gotta check. And we want the x minus uh, the the x's go away, and we get thirty all over three, x plus two, x minus four, the three and the 30 reduce and we get what we expected. So that is our answer. A and B are those numbers because then blah, 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 the reduces and we get what we wanted. I'm just supposed to integrate the, though. I know we will, but the, I mean, obviously we, that, I did. The whole point, but I, what I'm getting at is I wanted to show you that it works. All right, got it. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be that way with you, isn't it? It's gonna be that way. You're gonna be that guy, right? You're gonna be that guy. There's always one, someone in every class who's that guy, and that's you. All right. So let's put this back together again. So if we were actually doing the problem, we break this guy up. And now we integrate. And so we get negative 5 over 3, natural log of x plus 2, plus 5 over 3, natural log, absolute value of x minus 4, plus c. And if you really, really wanted to, you could do this. x minus 4.
and you're done. Could you explain the last two steps? Sure, since they both contained a, a constant of five thirds, I pulled that out. The negative is gonna stick around with the natural log. Oh, sorry, with the X plus two term. Uh, the positive is gonna be with the X minus four. And now since I've got the difference of logs, they become division. And your subtracted logs become division. Added logs become multiplication. And just to make sure that we're not totally out of our mind, because we're on a roll of doing that, let's take the derivative, and it had better give us this. So taking the derivative of that, it's one over the stuff inside, times the derivative of the stuff inside. And the derivative of the stuff inside is a quotient rule. So you take the derivative of the first, leave the second one alone, minus um, you uh, uh, take you leave the first one alone, take the der um, derivative of the second, all over the denominator squared. Second u, oh that's backwards. Oh, uh, this is backwards. It's supposed to be the derivative of the first. Yeah, u v prime. Yeah, this is backwards. That's okay. I can fix it right here. Yeah, you leave the first one alone. You take the derivative second. It's u v prime minus. Um, uh, wait. Okay. Derivative of the first. Leave the second one alone. Minus u v prime. So I was right. You gotta trust my instincts. Either that or I'm gonna stop teaching geometry. All right. <laughs> All right, so now the x put, and this is squared. So now um, we, uh, we can cancel out that, we can cancel out that. And now we get one all over x minus four times and x plus two minus x minus four plus four because it's a, it's distributed through. So those cancel and I get my x's cancel and I get six. And the three and the six reduce to just a two, and the two and the five make 10. So it does work. You know what, that would be a really good quiz question. do all of it. Do the partial derivative, take the partial fractions, then put them back together again, then integrate it, and then take a derivative of it. Put it together, take it apart, put it back together again. You know what? That's, you know what? Oh, good work, Lauren, I agree with you 100%. Well done, that's, you know what? She, you didn't see her do it, right? You, you didn't see her? She was going like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, let's do that. Okay. Okay. So here's what everyone's going to do. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, okay. And just for the record, this is Lauren standing all by herself on top of the problem. <laughs> uh, Not to jump right off. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> all right. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to break this down using partial fractions, and you're going to find my, co my coefficients A and B. Do that. And then put them back together again and see that you actually got the right answer. <laughs> 